Om Shri Sai Ram. I offer my most humble pranams at the lotus feet of beloved Bhagwan, dear Swami, respected elders, dear brothers and sisters. Let's begin our story at a point where it's a bright, fresh morning in Brindavan. That's how all mornings are at Brindavan. At Trai Brindavan, there is this student, Ananta Prakash. He is walking with another gentleman by his side. and they are walking towards the main gate of trai brindavan to walk out as they are crossing swami's interview room door the whole trai brindavan is built like a lotus in a pond and across the pond there is a bridge that leads to swami's interview room door the interview room door opened and swami came out fresh in the morning swami is always fresh but because the morning is so fresh and we are fresh we feel swami is also fresh swami is nothing but a reflection of our our own selves suddenly this gentleman who is beside brother ananta prakash just runs straight to swami this brother is little nervous because it, this is not expected this indiscipline is not expected from anybody but suddenly swami's face lights up his eyes become big and he welcomes this gentleman waves his hand creates vibhuti and puts it into the palm and then now turns to this brother anant prakash and tells him ha now you can take him so brother anant prakash also rushes to swami now holds this gentleman and says come let's go at that time this person with the vibhuti in his hand just upturns it drops the entire vibhuti to the floor and just dusts his hand and walks away brother anand prakash is shocked shocked at his behavior he turns because swami is still there in front of swami you are discarding the vibhuti that swami gave and swami says last birth for him very good man very good man don't worry and swami goes back into the interview room and shuts the door prema swarup lara his name is dr chai ko singh dr chai ko singh is not actually a doctor <laughs> but he used to call himself a doctor and he used to give wonderful solutions to many problems because of which the students in the hostel began to call him a doctor who is this doctor chai ko sing i'll call him just chai because that's how swami used to call him in fact swami used to uh, whenever swami would see him swami would say chai with so much of joy you know c h a a o o i i mean that was how swami would pronounce his name chai and it was almost as if swami is getting so much joy you know chai or joy i could not make out and the same joy would reflect on swami's face and swami would ask how are you chai and chai would raise up both his hands with thumbs up and say i'm fine i'm fine who is this chai who gave so much of joy to swami he was from singapore and he came from a very wealthy family His elder brother had been kidnapped for a ransom and his father refused to yield to these kidnappers did not pay the ransom because of which chai also got kidnapped and then he witnessed the brutal butchering hacking to pieces of his own brother in the front of his very own eyes that is what the kidnappers did before releasing him and seeing this snapped something within he lost mental stability and equilibrium it got worse day by day and finally he was admitted in a mental asylum in chennai previously it was called madras that is where he was admitted and there you know treatments have evolved so much now nine this i am talking of in the 1970s people who were considered mad or mentally deranged were treated like animals that's what happened that kind of treatment made chai become very aggressive 
where he didn't trust anybody in the world. When anybody would come close to him, he would gnash his teeth, hit them, throw things at them. And to make matters worse, Chai was well versed in multiple martial arts. So you can just imagine how it would have been. This went on for a couple of years. They did shock treatment. They did. Uh, they locked him up like an animal in a cage, and it was a very, very difficult time for him in his life. And his father did not know what to do. That is when in Vrindavan one day Swami just came to him and said, "Leave your son with me. I will take care of him." Just one sentence of assurance. And from 1979, Chai began to stay with Swami in Vrindavan. Just across, Swami gave him a place to stay just across his residence. And what did Swami do? The only property that Swami has, Swami would say, students are my own only property. The only property that Swami has, He put them in charge to take care of Chai. And it was not an easy job, let me say. Taking care of Chai, because Chai, as I said, would lose his temper. He was very, very, very fragile. He was emotionally very badly hit. The only cure for that was Swami's divine love. That is why, in Swami's presence, he would be like an angel, like a baby, so gentle, so sweet, so calm. But once back in the room, when the students had to take care. The chai boys, that's what they were called. Every year, a few students would be selected. And what kind of students? Students who are hefty, well-built, strong. Because if chai does his karate move on you, you should have the strength to be able to hold him. In fact, they would even check if the students had learned some martial arts, and they were given preference. Why would a student volunteer to do such a dangerous and difficult job? Because Swami. Would give interviews to chai boys, speak to chai boys. That was the greatest incentive. Anything that Swami would give importance to, the students will do, devotees will do, we all will do, because for us the greatest incentive is to get Swami right. And there is a reason behind every act of Swami. Why did Swami incentivize this? Today, looking back, I realize because Swami showed us the power of love. The healing power of love. In the early days, it was very, very difficult. You open Chai's door, and Chai might throw a knife at you. He would come with a bottle and break it on your head sometimes if you are not alert. Throw plates at you, throw tumblers at you. Sometimes he would have answered nature's call in the living room. Sometimes he will have thrown the food all around the kitchen. These are the kind of scenarios that the Chai boys had to face. But they would do it with a smile, with great shama, with great forbearance and great love. Because Swami loves chai. That is what it is, you know. That is why I feel in this whole world the only thing that is worthwhile winning is Swami's love. It doesn't matter if the whole world is on the opposite side. Swami is by my side. That's enough. It so happened that you know. Uh, I got the chance of speaking to different chai boys, different generations of chai boys, and each of them narrated some beautiful tales and stories. You know, one chai boy, Sai Ram sir, I say because he was my physics teacher in the higher secondary school. Another chai boy is brother Vivekanand Sahu, who was a few years senior to me. Sai Ram sir had a very very interesting experience to narrate when he became a chai boy. That was the time when Chai contracted tuberculosis. Now, tuberculosis is a very contagious disease. So, Sai Ram sir was very, very nervous about taking care of Chai. What if he contracts tuberculosis? That was a worry. So, one day he confided to the other Chai boys. He said, "Brothers, you know, Chai has got tuberculosis." They said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." So, you better keep away. Then, what about you? You, you, you both. You are not worried. No, no, no. You know what? Swami had patted us on our head and said, "Don't worry." So we are sure that we won't get tuberculosis because of that. Uh, it was almost like as if Swami had given them a vaccination by just patting them on the head. So they said, "So Swami has given us that pat, so we are fine. But you take care." So this used to play on Sai Ram sir's mind always. That year for Guru Purnima, you know, Swami 
in june mid june usually would leave brindavan and go to prashanti nilayam so the next chance that the brindavan boys get to have darshan and sparshan and sambhashan with bhagwan is during guru purnima so next guru purnima when they all went to prashanti nilayam sairam sir was seated at the back of the bhajan hall thinking that let me write a letter to swami about this problem you know chai has got tuberculosis what should i do so chai boys would take turn take turns to stay even when swami goes to puttaparthi and prashanti nilayam they won't go for darshan they will stay in brindavan to take care of chai that is the kind of sacrifice they did because ultimately what wins us god's love and grace is sacrifice swami would say na karmana na prajaya dhanena tyage nai ke amrutatva manushu it is only sacrifice that gives you immortality and proximity to god so this time the other tuberculosis vaccinated brothers had stayed back in brindavan and sairam sir had gone to prashanti nilayam that day even before he could write the letter to swami swami comes walking up to him and out of the blue simply pats him thrice on the head a surprise sairam sir looks up at swami and swami says don't worry you will also be fine <laughs> the omnipresence of bhagwan the omniscience of bhagwan because of serving chai sairam sir became deserving to experience this let me share another experience of brother vivekanand sahu as i said one day when he was going across trai brindavan to serve breakfast for chai he served breakfast and then he was returning when he was returning again he was pleasantly surprised because swami had opened the interview room door and swami had come out swami asked him hey kidhar jata hai where are you going he ran up to swami and he said swami i had gone to give breakfast to chai and uh, now i am returning to the hostel swami asked him what breakfast did you give him swami noodles swami said no you gave him fish no swami i gave him noodles you gave him fish swami said swami he never eats non vegetarian food chai used to eat non vegetarian food but somehow after coming to swami you know that is the magic of love though he is in the eyes of the world a person without uh, proper mental faculties the heart is always perfect when he found out that swami doesn't like non vegetarian food he began to get repulsed with non vegetarian food he would not even allow his sister who used to continue to eat non vegetarian food his sister was in singapore she would visit him now and then even if she brings meat he would throw it away and say no no i don't want non veg food so brother vivekanand said so swami no uh, he doesn't eat swami said no you gave him fish anyway go now and swami went back suddenly you know brother vivekanand remembered i made noodles which chai sister had brought and given me so he ran back to the dietetics department where he had made the food and picked up that wrapper in which the noodles had come and on that he noticed in the ingredients 2% was fish powder can you hide anything from swami again even brother vivekanand experienced swami's omnipresence and omniscience because he was serving serving service is something very dear to swami's heart if we feel that we want to get an experience swami i want to experience your omnipresence your omnipotence your omniscience then i should do service what kind of service there is so much i will not go into that now but seva is something very close to swami's heart in fact on one occasion a doctor who had met with an accident had got miraculously saved and swami told him because you do my seva i will save you seva is s e v a save is s a v e swami said nu seva chesthe nen save chestanu you do seva i will save you one day this was 1992 during a trai session where swami was seated with all the students swami suddenly said chai sister is going to come oh, okay and then swami said not actual sister another sister she is coming to murder chai my god she will take him to mysore and kill him because she wants his property at that time the warden said but swami why who is this what property what is this happening but that's all swami wanted to reveal so he changed the topic and that was forgotten forgotten in the sense over 
it went away in the flow of other things many days passed swami's visit to brindavan came to a close swami left for prashanti nilayam and then from prashanti nilayam swami again came back to brindavan for a few days and then swami left to hyderabad i think that was the that was the last ever visit swami made to hyderabad in 1992 swami went to hyderabad at that time you know warden at the brindavan hostel got word that chai sister wants to pick up chai and take him for some shopping in bangalore he said of course talk to the chai boys and fix up a convenient time at that time sairam sir whom i narrated about was a chai boy so he was told to accompany chai and go to bangalore to do whatever the shopping is sairam sir agreed suddenly it came to his mind what swami had said during the thrai session so he ran to the warden and he said sir swami had said his sister will come and oh warden was suddenly alerted he also remembered he said find out more details about this so on that day sairam sir went and told all the other students in the hostel we have to do some investigation we have to find out who is the sister and sure enough the sister who turned out was not chai's actual sister she said she was a cousin and she came so as she reached the hostel and she was talking to the students asking them to get chai because you know the warden had already told you can come to the hostel and pick him up sairam sir now stealthily sneaked out of the ashram to see where is this uh, person coming from and there were two cars standing outside the ashram and both of them in sairam sir's words had people who had shaolin type ponytail a kind of uh, you know uh, closed kind of eye a mongoloid kind of face they were standing there they looked like people of uh, eastern asian origin you know he got nervous he simply walked there and he asked sir uh, why are you here he said we are here to pick up somebody and where are you headed to we are headed to mysore oh my god they had said there that bangalore shopping and they are headed to mysore so he ran back and told the warden and the warden said immediately evict that sister out of the campus no chai is not going nobody is going anywhere and they had to forcibly evict her and she began to curse and shout so much but she was evicted when swami came back to brindavan the first thing that the warden did was to go and inform swami with the chai boys they said swami chai sister swami stopped them and said you did the correct thing by not sending him so that was an incident that happened in 1992 one more thing when sairam sir was uh, as a chai boy one day he saw that chai had got a huge injury on his head he was lying down almost unconscious on his bed he had passed motions and done urine in the bed the whole room was in a mess immediately all the chai boys came it took them almost 4 hours to clean up chai bring him to a state of consciousness they called a doctor cleaned up the whole place and then began a period of 2 3 weeks of intense seva to chai Chai had become so weak with so much of blood being lost that every day he needed care. Every day the wound had to be dressed. Every day he had to be fed food. He had to be cleaned. He had to be given a bath. His toilets had to be taken care of. Everything and Sairam sir and the other Chai boys did it with all their love. Because when they do this, they are not doing it only for Chai. They are doing it for Swami, right? Swami in heart. Swami is love. and when we think that only god is capable of this love no not just bhagwan that's why swami said bhagavatam is bhagwan bhakta and bhakti what bhagwan can do bhakta can also do bhakti can also do with devotion a devotee can do what the lord does why i am saying this is after 3 weeks when chai had regained strength he turned to sairam sir one day when he was giving him a bath and he said with tears in his eyes he said thank you sairam sir was surprised because you don't expect a mad person to express all this right so he turned he asked him thank you for what and at that point chai said 
थैंक यू बिकॉज नो बडी विल डू द थिंग्स दैट यू हैव डन फॉर मी चाय हग डिम बोथ हग डी चदर टीयर्स इन दर आई दैट इज अ मैजिक ऑफ लव इट गोज बियॉन्ड द बॉडी इट गोज बियॉन्ड द माइंड लव इज समथिंग दैट एवरी बडी फील्स चाय फेल दैट लव दैट इज वाई आफ्टर दैट यू नो सो मेनी इंसिडेंट वेर चाय so loving on one occasion he saw a child walking and he asked the chai boy and he said i want ice cream go get ice cream took the ice cream went and gave it to that little girl and said eat this was an amazing transformation chai who would not let anybody near him who would throw knives at people is now giving ice cream to a little girl that is the transformation love heals all trauma love is a cure for everything Love is the cure for the greatest cancer that afflicts our minds. Chai, when I became a student in the year 2000 in Vrindavan, Chai was such a loving presence. He would come in the hostel. He would serve food to us. He would walk into our room and crack jokes. And believe me or not, brothers and sisters, when we had any problems and we are not able to get access to Swami, we would in fact ask those things to Chai, and Chai would give answers like Swami. It was very very. what can i say it's very strange but true that is the kind of being chai became transformed by swami's love the 9th of december 2001 chai was in the hostel dining hall serving buttermilk and as one of our teachers umesh sir came to him he served him buttermilk and then called him close and put his head on his shoulder umesh sir thought that hey this chai is again up to one of his playful jokes when he raised him chai was gone i get tears thinking of this chai left he had a smile on his face he was in the company of all those who love bhagwan and he was serving what a way to go they say a way a person leaves his body is an indication of the way the person has led his life no wonder swami said no more birth for chai 9th of december 2001 was the day chai decided to merge in swami's lotus feet swami was informed and swami sent detailed instructions as to how his funeral rites must be done and with that a journey of more than 3 nearly 3 decades 79 1979 25 years more almost 22 years chai who lived in the grace and blessings of swami also left his body in vrindavan and this is a story of such inspiration it shows the power of love and it inspires us to imbibe that love and as we think of swami if we have to define swami in one word i'm sure all of us will choose that word to be love on this day i would like to conclude by saying by praying to swami swami make us vessels of your love may we hold your love and share your love every moment of our life thank you jai sai ram